So now we're going to combine everything in the uh, previous lectures and we're going to actually make our first program. So before we make this program, we need to talk a little bit about documentation. Uh, we talked about mnemonic variables as a friendly thing for humans. Another thing that's a friendly thing in programs for humans, and you will tend to realize that the human that you're being friendly to when you're writing code and you're doing it well, is yourself. So good variable names are going to help you a lot. They might help your teaching assistant, but they're also going to help you. Um, and comments. Comments are a way for us to add text that's ignored by Python to our programs. And so it's, it's a great way to give a little idea what's going on in code. Uh, maybe there's a couple of lines coming up that are, you know, 10 lines long that's a little complex and you want to say, oh, all this is really doing is reversing the order of these two things or, or who knows what. Or you might document who wrote the code and you can actually just take a line of code and put a pound sign in front of it and then instead of deleting the line of code. And sometimes you do that for debugging. You add debugging code and then when you don't want the debugging code, you just put a pound sign in case you want to take the pound sign out to turn the code back on. So we turn it, I use it a, as a way to turn it on, off and on lines of code. So here is our word frequency that we keep coming back to. And what I've added here is I've added four comments. I've added comments that basically help us understand what's going on. And remember, I call these like paragraphs. Our first paragraph has human readable code, human readable text. Get the name of the file and open it. That's what's going to happen in the next two lines. These next five lines, are count the word frequency. Maybe I should say make a histogram. So make a histogram and you can just read this. And so again, don't think of this as like uh, the teacher's telling you that you gotta write comments. Think of this as like, I'll write comments so I remember what I was doing here. Why, why did I write this code? So write the comments to help yourself out. And now here, the last thing, we're all done and we're printing the stuff out, okay? So that's comments. It's an important part of documenting your code so that uh, you can, uh, figure it out later. And again, the human who's going to like you for doing all this stuff is you, right? So you, this is you, and you're you're giving a gift to the future you, right? So you are writing comments so that the future you can read the comments because in a day or a week or a month, you won't quite remember what you were doing. So go ahead and write comments, but don't write them because I said so. Write only the ones that you find useful and don't do something like um, x equals one, pound sign, put one in x. That's kind of silly. I mean, everyone can figure out what x equals one means. So you don't put silly comments in just for silliness. You just put them in so that you can, especially when you, you have to understand what's going on here so that people don't have to read quite so detailed. And one of the things they would do is they would read this and check to see if it really did what you said it was gonna do to help you debug it, for example. So, so that's comments. Documentation, very important. Okay, so now we're gonna do our first programming code. Now, the pattern that's gonna happen in here is a pattern that I call, and I was taught 25, 30, many years ago, input, processing, and output are the essential things that computers do. They gather some input, maybe from a file or from a web service, they do some work to it, and then they produce something. In, work, out. The work is the hard part, usually. And so this program is our first program that demonstrates all three of those things, input, processing, and output, and it's a three-line program with one comment. So the problem that this program is trying to solve for those of you who have uh, traveled in the US and traveled everywhere else, is that um, the ground floor in hotels in most of the world is the zero floor. And the ground floor in the United States is the one floor. And so you might find yourself in a European elevator asking what floor, I mean, what is the equivalent United States floor to this floor that I'm sitting on? So if I'm on floor seven, what would be this floor if I was in the United States? And that's the problem we're going to solve. Now it's probably not gonna make us rich if we build an app for this, but perhaps someone can get the European Elevator Converter app into some app store, and maybe you will get wealthy after all. But for now, it just is sufficient to teach us about a full-blown program that does input processing and output. It's as simple a program as I could make. So let's take a look at it. A comment, convert elevator floors. That has nothing to do with Python, has to do with you or me reading about this. Then input, 
Well, remember, input prints out the prompt and then pauses and waits. And then we type, and then we type the enter key, right? And then this zero, this is a string. The string ends up being input in the variable imp. And then it continues to the next line, and it works on the right-hand side. We're going to pull this string zero. We have to convert it to an integer, otherwise we can't add one to it. If we, did, if we just int plus one, we'd get a trace back. But we say int of imp, convert it to an integer. Now, if you, if you mess this up and put bob in, then this thing is going to blow up because int can't convert bob to an integer. But because we have a zero here, we're OK. So then we add one to it and store that in USF. USF, mnemonic variable name, United States floor, imp, the input we got from the user. I'm, I'm using good variable names here. So I, we store this in. And so you know we got that becomes one. And then we print out US floor, comma, USF. Remember the comma produces this little space down here. And so we have our input processing and output in a way that builds us an application. Okay. Now, there's lots of things left to do, and most programs aren't one line long, and there's a lot of work that we're going to have to learn, but this gets us a start. So we've talked a lot of stuff. We've talked about constants. We've talked about variables. We've talked about reserved words. We've talked about type. We've talked about mnemonic variable names, which are both wonderful and a little confusing at the same time. Operators, operator precedents, focus a little bit on division where we talk about Python 2 versus Python 3, type conversion and comments, and then writing an entire program. So up next, we're going to start talking about uh, conditional execution using the if and the else and other of the reserved words. And this is where some of the intelligence uh, starts to seem to come into computers. So uh, up next, uh, conditional execution.